Welcome to the Eclectic Thrift and Crafter, where we thrift and craft with purpose. It's Tea Tuesday. Or in my world, Crafty Tuesday. And what do we do when it's cold and soggy outside? We have a lovely cup of hot chocolate, and of course, the Italian equivalent of Turkish delight and a few biscottis. Hello. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. We will have a quick sip of cocoa, a sweet treat, and then we're off on our cardboard adventure. We're going to revisit that little cardboard church I picked up at an estate sale about two and a half months ago. The little cardboard church is called a Putz House. Our adventure is going to begin with a purchase from the estate sale. This little house was the only one I found. It's the little cathedral. I paid 50 cents for it. Here we have a few similar images of Putz houses from the internet. My family had only six of these. The history of these houses go back beyond the 1700s. In the description below, I'm going to link you to the site by Pete Olden, who is an historian and collector of Putz houses. On his website, not only will you find a detailed history of this vintage holiday delight, you will also be able to purchase replacement parts for vintage projects. What do we do with those bulk boxes from Costco? I have an idea. We're going to build this little cottage. Today's video is going to be part one of a two-part series, and we're going to start with this organic sweet potato box. When completed, my little cottage is going to measure approximately six and a half inches high. Now, as you can see, this is not super thick cardboard. It's very sturdy, but it's approximately the same width as one of these little product boxes. The paint on the outside, as well as the glitter, gives the house an extra sturdiness. I'm just using a simple acrylic paint from Walmart. I do have red cellophane from the dollar store that I will be able to repair the missing windows from the little church. Well, let's give it a try. It's a cute little house and we'll see how far we can get today. This is all going to be freehand. There are no plans. I'm going to put the picture up right in front of me. So this is all going to be very impromptu. It needs to be in the middle or that will drive me crazy. All right, let's get started. Now, the one thing that I learned through this entire build process with the 112 scale is to make sure you use the same ruler or measuring device throughout your project. I know we want to trust that all rulers and measuring tapes are the same, but they are not. You can find yourself off by as much as a quarter of an inch to a half an inch to a full three quarters of an inch if you're not careful. I learned this the hard way on the 112 scale build. So since I took a pause on my building for the holidays, I have ordered all, an all metal compass, protractor, and T-square set. They will all have the same measurements. Even the thickness of your pencil line can throw you off. Keep your pencil sharp all the time. And do not use a magic marker. The thickness of the ink when you use a marker will alter your measurements. The Putz House name is derived from the German word Putzen, which means to put, to decorate, or arrange. After the Reformation, the early Protestant church was often persecuted by other religious movements. The Moravians were part of an older and smaller Protestant group. As their numbers grew smaller after many religious wars, they began immigration to America. Settling in America, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania was founded on Christmas Eve in 1742, and with them they brought this delightful way of commemorating Christmas. You will find more of this wonderful history on Pete Ullman's site. 
Now right here is going to be a fold. You will see that this fold is where the house juts out just a little bit from the other section of the house. Right there. Now you can see that I have cut two sections way beyond my mark. Those are tabs for folds for where I'm going to be gluing the house in place to other sections. I'm going to fold those tabs with the flat end of my ruler and fold it back and forth to make it a little more pliable. At this point, this is where you're going to start developing that three-dimensional effect. So now I'm going to cut a duplicate for the back of the house. I've made sure that on every side I've cut tabs so that this will make gluing the sections of the house together very easy. At the fold in the center, we're going to connect the two pieces with a support wall. I love the tacky glue, it dries very quickly, so we've removed our clamps and now we can move on. Now we're going to create and attach our two outside walls.
These little metal clips come in so handy. I bought them in bulk at Walmart. To put the roof on, I need the house to keep its shape, so I cut a foundation from some foam artboard. It's time to put the roof on. There's a lot of measuring as I go in this little project. There are no plans. From this project, I can actually make a pattern. Now we're going to do the main roof. Use the end of your ruler to bend the cardboard. It works very, very well. That's why I love these stainless steel rulers. This is the step where I remind you to always create tabs so that each section of the house will connect together with ease. Once again, to get a nice straight bend, use the end of your steel ruler. A rubber band should hold things steady while we move on to our next step. To add the two dormers, I'm going to switch over to using hot glue, so have your hot glue gun ready to go. I did add a little hot glue down the creases of the houses where the roofs meet that will sort of act like the first layer of snow on the roof. 
Next, we're going to create the front door facade. I put three layers of cardboard to create the thickness of the front entryway. I covered it with postal tape. I did the same with a smaller version for the smaller section of the house. We've reached the end of part one where we're going to put on our first coat of white paint. Next week, we're going to put the final coat on with the glitter and then we're going to decorate. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please like and subscribe. Share my thrifting and crafting channel with your thrifting and crafting friends and help me to reach 1,000 subscribers. I welcome your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. Check us out on Instagram and tap that notification button for upcoming announcements of thrifts and crafts. But most of all, have a lovely, lovely day.